there were no boundaries on him. He wasn't shackled by anything. And because he wasn't shackled by anything, in some sense in that movie, he was able to achieve whatever he wanted. You know, so I talked to my statistics class this morning and I said, you know, it's kind of interesting. The thing that I observe about a lot of students when it comes to mathematics is they actually do what to themselves? They shackle themselves to the point where they can't do things. You know, they'll, they'll tie themselves up and, uh, t you know, I used to say tie people's shoes together before they want to race, but there's always this personal shackling that we sometimes do to ourselves, you know. And, and that's true for anybody. We all do it, you know. And we all do it for different things. But what I notice sometimes people make it a lot harder than what has to be. So they may start to create questions that can put you outside the scope of a math class and then out, you know, it puts you in a whole other thing. So yours is a good question. It's a completely valid question, you know, but you're never going to see, you know, the smaller number and the larger number and then these inequalities switched. But we also cover this in more detail in Math 125, so. So you can also see a lot more, you know, we, you have a lot more fun. One of the reasons we have to do this in 115, because when you go to 125, the first day in 125, I talk about these things. And in that case, first day, you know, we talk about what's called absolute, you know, absolute value equations, absolute value um, inequalities. And uh, that's where this is going to come into play for you. But anyway, that's the, that's the, waving, that's the waving hands answer you give to people. But, uh, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to do more work with this. But you have a good question, but you're not going to see that. Okay? You guys, you, and take comfort in that. You go, Phew, I'm not going to see that. What are you going to see? This one, two, three, or what? Four. Question. Yeah. Why should we respect the x on the graph? Say that again. On the, on the graph, x is missing. Isn't yeah, you're right. X is missing because what does x what does what does x represent? It's an arbitrary what? Real number. You know, so they didn't, they didn't list the numbers. And they didn't list the numbers because they would die before they actually finished the list. So what they're saying is that, you know what? Describe arbitrary real numbers that are between one half and what? Four. So what are they? Well, it's all of these numbers that we shaded, essentially. So would you agree with that? That the real numbers that are between one half and four are these numbers? So in a sense, this is where your what? Values of x are. Numbers that are between 1 half and what? 4. They just gave us more detail. Include the 1 half, but what? Do not include the 4. Okay, you guys okay with that? It's kind of like this. I'm gonna, I'll talk a little bit more you know, about... We got some, more, we got some phrases we're going to work with, probably. And um, it's kind of something I described yesterday to you guys. It's not a between scenario. But let me say, for example, how old do you have to be to drink? No, you don't. <laughs> oh, all right, let's not get into that again. In the United States, how old do you have to be to drink? If you are a person, I'm going to say this to you. Let X be the age of a person in the U.S. How old do you have to be to drink? You have to be how old? 21 or older. Is that true? What does that mean? The age of a person. Who am I describing? Anybody? Anybody in particular or in general? In general, X is the age of a person. I'm not, I'm not talking about your age. I'm not talking about your age. I'm doing this arbitrarily. The age of a person has to be in relation to the number 21 what? At least what? 21. Do you guys know what inequality is associated with at least? We're going to go through all these details. Greater than or what? Equal. So you have to be at a minimum what? 
21. But you can also be what? More. Greater than. And if I had to graph this, by the way, you say, well, how old do you have to be, you know, to drink? Well, I'll put zero over here. Where's 21? It's positive. Here's 21. In a sense, if I were to shade, well, I have to shade what? 21. I have to shade numbers that are what? Larger. If your age is in this interval, from 21 up to what? Infinity, including 21. If your age is in this graph, this interval, this set, if we wrote it as a set, then you could drink. So what I'm saying to you is that value x is an arbitrary value, but it has to satisfy the requirement of being what? Greater than good 21. So we're going to go through some of the language, not today, um, so that you guys can be good with some language of inequalities, really. Because when I also teach the statistics course, one of the big things that I notice with students is that they may not understand or really have used certain, certain words or phrases. You know, things like what? At least. More than. No more than. Less than. No less than. You know, we could describe all those phrases in terms of these um, inequalities. And that's important, okay? Because that's very important, because when you go to statistics, some of the language that we use for a lot of our problems are just that. So we also have to learn language, you know? So mathematics, there's a lot of language. And that's coming up when? Next week, so you guys get to stay tuned for the language of what? Math. And what comes with the language of math? Word problems? The begin. What's the dirtiest word in math? I can't. No, that's a phrase. Fractions. No, it's not fractions. Huh? Some people say fractions. No, there's a dirtier word. Word problems. Nah, there's a dirtier word. What's the dirtiest word in math? Proof. <laughs> Is that a dirty word? Proofs are the best. In fact, you know what we're doing here? That's not even math. This isn't math. I told this to my calculus class. I said, you guys know what we're doing here? Calculus. This isn't even math. Looking at me like, what are you talking about? You know, I had Moshi visit me last night, yesterday. You know that kid we talked about? He showed, he showed up to my office, say hello. He's at UCLA. He's going to go to graduate school somewhere where they're... Um, he's going to go to graduate school maybe, well, he has options. He's looking at Princeton or UCLA or wherever. He's thinking he has options. So he's going to graduate school, the kid, you know. He's going to take a year off and go to graduate school. He's, when he was in my class, he was probably about this tall. No, maybe less tall. I don't know. You know how tall he is now? About this tall. He's pretty tall, pretty big. So why am I bringing up Moshi? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I told him too. I said, you know, Moshe, this isn't math because he's majoring in math. This isn't even in, this isn't even math. This is calculus. He now understands what I'm saying because he, he talks about mathematics and he tells his mom and evidently he says, "Oh, mom, I love math so much. It's amazing." And yeah, it is. It's amazing. You guys don't get to see it because you're really learning what algebra. You know, you're learning calculus. Ugh. You could, if you learn math, you guys would be excited. So what what's math? What's math? It's, pro it's proofs. Yes. You prove everything. You don't do the computation, really. You prove ideas and theorems and use definitions. It's proof oriented, it's all proof. You guys don't like that? You don't like that? Oh, too many? That's just geometry. There's a lot of theorems. There's a lot of um, concepts. There's a lot of ideas. All those terms and ideas and concepts lead to what? New technology, new ways of doing things. It leads to, um, it leads to progress. You know, so it's, 
It's very fascinating. The math, there's mathematics for things that we can't really do yet physically. You got the math for it, but you don't have really the technology to do it yet. So the technology has to catch up to the mathematics. But once it does, what happens? So amazing stuff. Man, you, you guys don't know. I feel so bad for you guys sometimes when you leave. I do. I'm like, these guys are leaving with a frown on their face. They don't even know how wonderful this is. They're frowning all the time. Well, let's double check. Let's give you some uh, examples. You guys don't even know. It's... Hmm. Let's, go, let's double check some of your examples here. Okay. Um, I took these from your, from your book, some homework. These are actually from some from the other class. I'm going to ask you guys to do the following. You're going to, you're going to do what? Solve and also, what else do you think you want to do? Graph. Give your solutions a graph, what? Yeah. Set notation, interval notation. Do all three. In fact, we're going to give you a quiz. You're going to get out a sheet of paper. You're going to see what we do with this. When do you guys want to make your mistakes? Now. You don't want to make it on a what? On a test. Call this number one. Two, negative 24 greater than 8x. Number two. Negative 8 fifths greater than 2x. Number three, 10 minus x, less than or equal to negative 12. Number four, 4 fifths, 3x plus 4, less than or equal to what? 20. You're going to solve each one of these. You're going to do what? You're going to also graph the solution set, write it in interval notation, and also describe it in set what? Notation. Okay, we'll give you some time to do this. We'll grade it. You'll see your mistakes and your errors. You'll fix them. And then you guys will be good to go with all your homework and, you know, everything will be fine. So let's try some of these out. Okay, you guys have all these here? Yes. Okay, we're going to go over these. You guys are going to grade that quiz. And what I'm going to say to you, I'll tell you where to put a check mark, and I'll tell you where to circle. Circles are your errors. So you're going to circle the error. That's it. Just put a big circle around, them, around it. We're going to put a check mark if it's correct. Okay, so let's go through this. As you guys know, what do you do? Divide, Divide both sides by what? By 8. By eight. Okay, you get what? Negative 3 greater than, that's greater than, right? Or is it less than? It's greater than, what happens with your 8? Okay, you got negative 3 less than x. You can, this is a solution. You can, you can put a check for that. However, what I put is, remember what we did yesterday? Your use of graphing, not negative 3 greater than x, your use of seeing x on the left. Is that true? Yeah. So I automatically put x on the left. <laughs> and I'll, I'm comparing negative 3 with x. So I'll put the negative 3 over here as well. See, I'm comparing two, two things. Negative 3 with what? x. So I put x and negative 3. What I do, though, is I want to make sure, though, what is Jaws opening to? Okay. What does Jaws have to open to here? Still the bigger number. What's the bigger number here? You guys with me on that? That's what we talked about yesterday. So if you have this or this, give them a what? Check mark. Either. We'll be okay. This is the